I want you to leave me one of these emojis down below if you've remembered to apply your sunscreen today. For six years now, I have known about my family history of melanoma. I never used to wear sunscreen because number one, whenever I used sunscreens, my skin would break out. And over the last couple of years, I had this mission, this goal that I would have, this skin that I have now because I've always had problematic skin. I've always had acne flare up and dermatitis flare ups uh, for as long as I can remember. I am making this video to number one, encourage you all to get your skin checked and most importantly, to wear your sunscreen every single day and to reapply it just like I do using the Aven sunscreen spray for face and body with an SPF 50 plus or the Aven sunscreen face emulsion with an SPF 50 plus as well that I've been using religiously for the past couple of years. I am very thankful that I have found a sunscreen that not only protects my skin, is beautifully formulated for sensitive skin types, including those with breakouts, and reapplies over makeup so that I can always live my, let's call it my personal skin best. Today, I'm taking you guys along with me as I see a dermatologist. I've never had my skin checked because I've always put it off. I can't even tell you how nervous I am. I can feel my heart like right here. I don't know why I'm anticipating like the worst outcome. I struggled to get to sleep last night. I have been up since 4 a.m. All right, let's go and meet Dr. Tong and get my skin checked. Philip Tong, I'm a dermatologist here in Bondi Junction. I have an interest in um, treating skin cancers, raising awareness for skin safety and skin health. Hi Ruby, thanks for coming to see me today. How can I help? Um, so I've got a family history of melanoma, which is what prompted me to come and see you today. I've got a few moles as well that I'm a bit concerned about. They've always been kind of large, a little bit irregular in shape and raised. But given that family history, I am concerned and I just want to make sure that I'm healthy, that my skin's healthy. In terms of um, the actual moles that you're concerned about, where are they? Um, I've got one on my neck. So this is one of the moles that you're worried about. So this is a fleshy mole. It, it is a mole, it's got pigment, but I'm not concerned about it. Um, oh, thank goodness. You don't need to do anything about it. That will just stay there. I'm happy to leave it. Okay, I've got know. one here on my temple. So this is the one on the temple that you're concerned about, is that right? So again, a fleshy mole. I've had a few sunburns growing up as a kid. Two sunburns were so bad that my skin actually blistered. And if, you know, there's anything else that needs to be checked, mm. since I do yeah. have quite a few spots that, and bumps. Just spread them out and you know, lift them up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. And then turn them around. That's it. Good. Let's look at um, the backs of your legs. So just turn around for yep. me. So um, the backs of the legs are fine. There are some moles on the backs of your thighs and you know, your calves are fine. There's nothing of concern there. Yes, others, others there. No, I'm very happy with that. Why is sunscreen so important for Australians, not just in the summertime, but all year round? Well, here in Australia, we get um, lots and lots of sun all year round. So it's really important to wear sunscreen, just like how you should brush your teeth every day. It's part and parcel of um, what you do. What is SPF? SPF stands for sun protection factor, and it determines how quickly uh, you get burnt when using a sunscreen compared to when you're not using it. What are UV rays and what's the difference between UVA and UVB rays? Uh, UV ray stands for ultraviolet uh, rays and it's emitted uh, as a form of energy from the sun. Um, it can be split into um, two forms of UV, UVA and UVB. We now know that UVA affects more to do with uh, skin aging, whereas UVB um, can have a more of a, a bigger effect on uh, skin DNA and cause cancer. How does sunscreen protect the skin? Sunscreens protect the skin uh, via a number of ways. So there are 
two main types of sunscreens, chemical sunscreens as well as physical sunscreens. So with chemical sunscreens, they absorb the damaging uh, rays from the sun, whereas physical sunscreens or physical blockers, they reflect away the uh, damaging UV rays. How much sunscreen do we need to use for our face, for example? I find a lot of my patients aren't actually using the correct documented uh, requirement of sunscreen to achieve the um, packaging's uh, SPF factor. Uh, generally for a face you need to have about a teaspoon of sunscreen to achieve the um, reported SPF on the package of the sunscreen. What do we need to look for on the packaging of a product when choosing a sunscreen? I like to recommend uh, my patients to have at least an SPF 50, factor 50 plus. Uh, broad spectrum, hence covering both the UVA and UVB. Um, because I'm in dermatology, I do like my patients not to get breakouts whilst using their sunscreen, so preferably find a sunscreen that's lightweight and preferably says non-comedogenic. Can you still use sunscreen if you've got sensitive, irritable skin? What attributes make a sunscreen good for sensitive skin? So that's a really good question, Ruby, um, because a lot of my patients um, do get or experience sensitivity from sunscreens. For these patients, I often recommend finding a sunscreen that contain more physical blockers, blockers such as zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. So look out for these ingredients when choosing a sunscreen for sensitive skin. How often do we need to reapply our sunscreen? I generally recommend reapplying your sunscreen every four hours. However, that changes if you're in water. My recommendation if you are swimming is to reapply every two hours if you plan to be in the water. If you wear sunscreen, do you still get the benefits of vitamin D? There's been a lot of studies to show that um, even wearing um, sunscreen religiously, you still get your adequate levels of vitamin D, for example, with mid-morning or mid-afternoon sun. So there's SPF in my makeup and in my moisturiser. Is that enough or do I need to apply a sunscreen as well? A general recommendation for women who, for example, um, wear makeup containing SPF is to apply a SPF containing, obviously containing sunscreen first and then apply their uh, makeup over the top. It's often um, a good idea to check whether their makeup is compatible with the sunscreen that they put uh, underneath. What should I apply first? Is it moisturiser, then sunscreen, or is it the other way around? That's an excellent question. I generally recommend uh, applying a moisturiser first uh, before applying a sunscreen. So what is skin cancer and how serious is it? Skin cancer um, is a malignancy of the skin and it can be very common, particularly here in Australia. It can be serious, particularly if the diagnosis is melanoma. Are melanoma and skin cancer the same thing? Melanoma is a skin cancer, but not all skin cancer is melanoma. There are other skin cancers that are commonly found, such as basal cell carcinomas, also known as BCCs, as well as squamous cell carcinomas, also known as SCCs. There are other rarer cancers, of course, of the skin. Why do some moles turn cancerous and other ones stay healthy? We don't know why some moles turn cancerous, but uh, we do know that UV exposure, particularly UV damage early in childhood, does have a role to play in this. And we suspect it's due to an accumulation of spelling mistakes over time. And as we get older, our ability to repair those spelling mistakes aren't as good as when we were younger. And that's what can lead to skin cancer. What does a healthy mole look like? A healthy mole is generally one that's symmetrical, one that is uniform in color, uh, light tan brown, uh, darker brown color generally one that's raised, uh, but doesn't always have to be. Um, importantly, it's looking for those moles that uh, appear to either be changing, have an irregular border, or different colours uh, should one take further action. What should we look for when doing an at-home skin check? I often encourage my patients to do an at-home mole check, and it's best done with uh, good lighting, for example, your bathroom in front of a mirror. So it's often uh, good to take a head to toe approach, top to toe approach by examining your scalp. So particularly for women, uh, the part line is the most important area to examine because that's where skin cancers can arise. Behind your ears, looking underneath your chin, using the mirror to look underneath the arms, um, for example, uh, the groin and in between the toes, all the areas that can potentially hide a skin lesion. Skin cancers can occur everywhere. Are moles always a dark brown colour? Uh, not all moles have to be dark brown. 
one, uh, there are certain moles that can be pink in colour, um, but that doesn't mean that they're dangerous. However, if it is changing or worrisome, it is worthwhile getting it checked out. How often do we need to see a GP or a dermatologist to monitor our moles and get a skin check? That's a really good question, Ruby. Uh, I do recommend um, regular skin checks, but that's dependent on a person's personal history of skin cancers, a family history, whether they have multiple moles or multiple dysplastic or funny looking moles. And that will determine my recommendation on how often you should get a skin check. So somewhere between three to six months for high risk patients to annually for, for lower risk patients. So I have a family history of melanoma. Can I get my moles removed as a precaution? Removing a mole as a precaution doesn't reduce your risk of melanomas. So even though you have a family history of melanomas, removing those moles won't make a difference for you. Let's say that one of my moles looks suspicious or concerning. What are the next steps after I get it removed? So um, indeed, if a mole is suspicious or concerning, uh, we would uh, undergo a what's known as a biopsy, and this is done under local anaesthetic. That gets sent off. And uh, when it gets sent off, a report comes back to me to say whether it is uh, a concern or not. Um, if it's not a concern, nothing further needs to be done. However, it, if it is a concern, then potentially further surgery is required. And how important is early detection? Early detection is super important, particularly in the setting of melanoma, because the earlier it is detected, the potential for it to be uh, curative. start off by applying my thinnest products first. So think of your essence, your toners, things that are very, very thin and easy to penetrate the skin. Then you want to move on to serums, eye creams, moisturizers, and then your sunscreen, because typically that could be the richest or thickest formula. I have quite a few skin sensitivities, which is why I keep my skincare routine as basic as possible. So it was literally an essence, an eye cream, and now a moisturizer that has been formulated to help sensitive skin. And when I'm doing my morning skincare routine, because I'm usually applying cosmetics afterwards, I always use the recommended amount of moisturizer. I begin by patting the moisturizer into my skin and then using my fingertip to give my face a massage. I find that I'm really puffy in the mornings and it also allows some time in between layering my moisturizer and then my sunscreen. So I think it's really important to allow some time between each product. And judging by the look of my face, you can see that I am quite excited to share with you this product. This is the Avan SPF 50 Plus Sunscreen Emulsion for the face. You will love this product if you have sensitive skin, if you have problematic skin, if you are a makeup lover and you are searching for a sunscreen that will wear beautifully underneath makeup that won't affect the performance of your base makeup allows your complexion products to wear beautifully throughout the day and this formula can be reapplied over makeup so that you can make sure that your skin is protected throughout the day i always use three to five pumps of sunscreen. And ideally you want to be using a teaspoon's amount worth of product to cover the skin on your face, your neck, and also on your ears too. For the skin on my body, I just find it is super convenient and time efficient to use a spray on formula. This is the one that I reach for on a daily basis because it is so effective. It is so gentle on sensitive skin and lightweight. I do have certain areas on my body where I have patches of dermatitis and this formula is so soothing because it has thermal spring water spray in it. Both the face emulsion and also this spray are rich in thermal spring water. Both formulations are extremely lightweight and gentle and they have a high broad spectrum UVB, UVA protection. This can help prevent solar keratosis, 
sunspots, especially if you do get breakouts like I do, that could become darker when exposed to the sun. It helps with premature skin aging and may assist in preventing some skin cancers, which is really important. Now, we know that this product is perfect for those who have sensitive skin types. We know that this product is going to give our skin the best protection possible. But how is it going to look under makeup, right? Because I'm somebody who has all of these skin issues and I feel self-conscious. So when I apply a product to my skin, I also want my skin to look really, really good and youthful and radiant. And this sunscreen, this face emulsion by Aven, it does that for me. I don't use a highlighter underneath my foundation or over top of my complexion products because it gives the skin a really nice glow but it has a mattifying texture it's not like super dewy and um, rich and as you can see products like foundations they glide over top of this formula heavier pigmented products like concealer and contour they also glide over the skin without causing any indentations especially if you are applying product directly from the bullet or the doe foot applicator because sometimes they can you they can leave indentations onto the skin and make the skin look patchy look i'm a real stickler for this sort of thing so i also wanted to show you how fully pigmented cream products would blend over top of foundations when you've got a sunscreen layered underneath because this could be a very very messy disastrous situation if you're not using the right product and as you can see it blended out beautifully. But one thing I really do love and appreciate is that the face emulsion is photo stable. So if you've got a daytime event, your skin is going to look beautiful in natural light. It's going to look beautiful in artificial light. It's going to look beautiful when a flash goes off from a photographer's camera. And all my textured skin girls, if you're wondering what it looks like after it's set with powder, you don't have to worry about it emphasizing any pores, spots, anything like that. Since I'm at risk of developing skin cancer because of my family history, I've actually set up reminders on my phone when I'm outdoors. So that doo -doo -doo that you heard is actually my reminder. So this is how I reapply my sunscreen over top of my makeup. And again, I am using the Aven Sunscreen Face Emulsion with SPF 50 plus. And I work the sunscreen really well in between my fingers, in the palm of my hands, and then I press the sunscreen that's on my fingers and hands gently over my skin. Sometimes I roll my fingers over my skin and do like spirit fingers. And don't be discouraged if you see like white marks on your skin. As you start pressing the sunscreen into the skin, it will disappear. It won't leave any white marks. You can then go in and touch up your foundation if need be with a compact cushion foundation or if you're as good as pressing in your sunscreen as I am, you can just go over um, your skin with a light dusting of powder to mattify. And then if you need to like reapply your blusher or bronzer, which is what I'm doing here, um, like your pigmented powder products reapply beautifully over your makeup and your sunscreen application. If you do have oily skin, however, I recommend that you blot the skin first before applying your sunscreen and then repowdering your skin just to help remove the excess oil and keep your skin looking texture free. This is what my skin looks like after applying my sunscreen, after applying my makeup, then reapplying my sunscreen and touching up with makeup once again. It is so important to invest in yourself. It is so important to invest in your skin. And the best thing that you could do is take the time every single day to apply and also reapply your sunscreen.